as they appeared in 5th edition and Pathfinder 2. In this video, I'm going to compare elves. Starting at the top with ability scores, in 5e, elves receive a plus 2 to dexterity. Pathfinder 2, you get a dexterity bonus of plus 2, a plus 2 to intelligence, and a plus 2 to any attribute of your choice. You're also hit with a penalty of a minus 2 to constitution. This is because in 5e, ability scores are determined by dice rolls or by assigning an array of numbers to your attribute scores from the start. In Pathfinder 2, ability scores start at 10 and accumulate boosts and penalties according to life choices you make for your character as you build it. So if the Pathfinder 2 bonuses seem very generous here, that's why. Speed. In 5th edition and Pathfinder 2, it's 30 feet. 30 feet of movement is the modern standard for medium-sized creatures in both systems, so no surprises. Dark vision. In 5th edition, you get dark vision up to 60 feet, the same as with dwarves. In Pathfinder 2, elves get low light vision, which is the ability to treat dim light as if it was bright light. Elves cannot see in complete darkness innately. You can choose the cavern elf heritage to make up for that, but by default, you don't get that in Pathfinder 2. Perception. In 5th edition, you get proficiency in perception. In Pathfinder 2, you get nothing! Again, to make up for that, you could select the Whisper Elf Heritage, although you couldn't... I just said that you could take Cavern Elf for Dark Vision. You can't have... you can't both be a Cavern Elf and a Whisper Elf, so you would be choosing between those two. But you can take the Whisper Elf Heritage to gain a plus two bonus to locate undetected creatures that you could have otherwise heard within 30 feet when taking a Seek action. You also get an increase to the range of your Seek action. This is a really interesting example of how Pathfinder 2 uses modular design for its ancestries, or races. A trait that's built in for 5e is an option in Pathfinder. That theoretically makes Pathfinder a little maybe tougher on the player because it's forcing you to make some hard choices. Along with that, that tough choice that you have to make, though, comes an unexpected build. It's, it's a unique build from what you built last week, or the other player across the table from you built. Yes, you're both elves, but one's a cavern elf and the other is a whisper elf, and so you have different abilities. Now, this also might arguably go against a trope, this specific one. I'm not sure whether most people think of elves as being innately more perceptive than other creatures, but then again, no one really questions it when it's given out for free in 5e. But I guess if you have that expectation, you can just take a heritage to get to where you think an elf should be. Mystical nature. In 5th edition, elves have advantage on saving throws against being charmed or being put to sleep through magical means. In Pathfinder 2, you get nothing! A similar expression of the mystical nature of elves is available with the seer elf heritage and the otherworldly magic ancestry feat. Both systems agree that elves ought to seem mystical, but they go about demonstrating it differently. This is probably down to lore, to be honest. In the Forgotten Realms, elves are fey creatures. They're modern refugees of the first world, of an earlier iteration of that planet. On Galarian, elves live in Kionin, but they originate from a mystical realm called Sovrian, which is probably another plane, possibly another planet. There are some hints that maybe they come from Triaxis originally, which is a different planet, and you can even visit that planet in Starfinder. So both are pretty mystical, but they're not exactly cut from the same cloth. Weapon proficiencies. In 5th edition, you gain longsword, shortsword, shortbow, and longbow proficiency. Unless you're a dark elf or a drow. Then you gain proficiency with rapiers, short swords, and hand crossbows. In Pathfinder 2, you get... NOTHING! Unless you spend your ancestry feat on elven weapon familiarity. The 5e elf's weapon proficiency is dependent on the subrace. It is a way to make sure that your elf is unique from the other elf sitting at the same game table. Heritage, or subrace in 5e. 5th edition has three subraces in the player handbook. There's more in other source books. I'm sticking to the player handbook. There's high elf, plus one intelligence, and one cantrip of your choice. Wood elf, plus one wisdom, 
and plus five to your move speed and improved hiding. You can hide even when there's nothing obvious to hide behind. Dark Elf or Drow, plus one charisma, 120 feet of dark vision instead of only 60, and disadvantage on attacks in sunlight and wisdom perception checks dependent upon sight in sunlight. Pathfinder 2 has five heritages. Arctic Elf, cold resistance up to half your level, minimum one. Treat environment cold effects as one step less extreme than what your dungeon master says. Cavern Elf, you gain dark vision. Seer Elf, you gain the detect magic cantrip, and a cantrip is heightened to a spell level equal to half your level rounded up. You also get a plus one to identify magic. Whisper Elf, you can use the seek action to sense undetected creatures in a 60 foot cone instead of just a 30 foot cone, and you gain a plus two to locate undetected creatures that you could hear within 30 feet while using the seek action. And finally, there's the Woodland Elf. You can climb trees at half your land speed or at full speed on a critical success. You can use the take cover action within a forest, no matter what, even if there's nothing obvious to hide behind. This once again demonstrates the modularity of Pathfinder 2 compared to previous iterations of the D&D model. It's interesting to note, though, that 5e's subrace options affect attribute scores, while Pathfinder 2 grants extra features and doesn't affect any of your core attributes. Hit points. In 5e, hit points aren't assigned by race, so there's zero, zero bonus to your hit points by being an elf. In Pathfinder 2, hit points are split between your race and your class, so for being an elf, you have six hit points. This gets boosted later according to your choice in class. There are common themes between the 5th edition and Pathfinder 2 elf, even though their lore is vastly different, the Forgotten Realm elves being creatures from an earlier iteration of the world, and the Galarian elves probably being from a different world altogether. Uh, the end result is functionally the same, I think. Elves are tall, elegant, seemingly aged ageless humanoids that often come across as wise and somber, or judgmental and aloof, depending on your disposition. In either system, there are two prominent themes. An elf is usually accustomed to a specific environment, uh, the woods, a place of natural beauty, or the underground, and that's formed how that elf interacts with the rest of the world. And an elf is long-lived, and has, by result, accumulated expertise in some area of life, whether it's mental or physical. Thanks for watching.